Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and I want to welcome all of you here today. Thank you so much for being here. It's a Tuesday local time here in Manila in the afternoon. We're having a beautiful sunny day today. Feels good to see that sun out and uh, feel those rays. And uh, here we're a little bit cool today, so it feels good inside the house as well. Again, we want to welcome all of you here at the Daily Dose of Hope. The Daily Dose of Hope is a place that you can come to on a daily basis and get to know God directly. And we do this very simply. We connect you with a book in the Bible, which is God's Word. It's God's inspired Word. And you look through that, uh, listen to the, the sermon that I give, you read that scripture on your own, and then you take the time to consider what God had to say directly to you. And then it leads to all kinds of other opportunities, like you can pray to God and, and uh, talk to God about what he wrote to you. And it's, uh, it's amazing what happens when you look into the word of God and you take the time to connect with him. So before we get into our lesson for today, and we're going to be in the Old Testament today, let's go ahead and bow our heads and ask God for his divine blessing. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty and powerful God. We love you. We praise your holy name. We pray, Lord, as we consider your word in Psalm 27, Lord, I pray that today we would have open minds. We have open hearts. Uh, we would be able to focus our attention on your word. And thank you, Lord, for your blessing and your care. Lord, and if by any chance anybody that's watching or listening right now has committed a sin in the last five seconds or in the last five minutes or five days, Lord, I pray that they would just simply know that they can use your word, which is in 1 John 1, nine that says, Lord, I confess this sin to you or these sins to you. And then they can just list those off individually and privately, Lord, between you and them. And Lord, I pray that um, those that have confessed their sin right now would know that you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name, that we pray all of this. Amen. Okay, again, my name is Chaplain Bob. I'm a grateful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a longtime missionary out here on the mission field. Uh, my specialty or what God has gifted me in is in evangelism. And that's how the Daily Dose of Hope was started. It was a way to do evangelism while we were stuck in COVID. And here we are almost, uh, what, 18 months later, 19 months later, and we're still stuck in COVID. <laughs> I just read something today from the local municipal government that we're allowed to do certain things um, but you now have to prove that you are fully vaccinated. And again, it bothers me because they're not considering people that have naturally had COVID and have had natural immunity. Uh, they still haven't figured that one out. And so anyways, I'm thankful that we are allowing more freedoms, but we all should have freedom. That's what God intended for us. So today we're going to look at God's freedom in Psalm 27. That's right. Let's move over to the Old Testament and let's go to Psalm chapter 27. I want to really encourage you to take your Bible out if you have it. We're only going to be in two verses today. Now, Psalm 27 is a 14 verse psalm. It's a psalm of David. It is a very, very encouraging psalm. In fact, I, I may end up uh, preaching from it again later this week. Um, Psalm 27 is so encouraging. You can just tell that God and David were walking hand in hand, and you know that David trusted God more than anything and anyone. So we are going to look at the last two verses of Psalm 27. I'm just simply calling this confident. So let's look at these two verses. Psalm 27, 13 and 14. Where would I be if I did not believe I would experience the Lord's favor in the land of the living? Rely on the Lord. Be strong and confident. Rely on the Lord. Okay, so David, the writer of Psalm 27 Again, inspired by God. This is breathed by God into David, and David writes it out. 
David gets very, very practical and he gets very serious. He says here in verse 13, he said, where would I be? Where would I be in life if I did not believe I would experience the Lord's favor in the land of the living? Now, we can look at this in two ways, I believe. Two ways. One, we can look at this as David being assured of salvation. He's believed in God the Father, and he believes with his faith that he has in God the Father that he's going to end up in eternity. He's going to end up with God someday, the land of the living. Okay? You can also look at this, and I I believe that this is... um, I, I don't know if there's a lot of controversy on this. I don't think there is. But you can also look at this as the land of the living in our earth. Okay? And he says, where would I be if I... If I did not believe, I would experience the Lord's favor in this life. In other words, everything that I do, the decisions I make leading the armies, the decisions I make as a king, I believe in the Lord's favor in everything here on earth. Now, in eternity, if you put it in the perspective of eternity... He's assuring us, the reader, that he believes that he's going to end up in everlasting life someday. So I I believe that you can look at this both ways, and I think you should. I think as a believer, you should know that when you make decisions, if it's according to God's will, God is going to bring you favor. Um, There have been many times in my life as a missionary um, there have been many times in my life as a just a regular walking human being that I've experienced God's favor, where something happened in my life and God intervened. God definitely intervened because he made a way for that to happen that I never expected. Or maybe I expected it to happen that way, but the path or the journey God totally caught me off guard. He totally caused me to think it was going to go one way, but we went the other way, and we still ended up in the same destination. That's favor. God's favor is what you really want. You don't want man's favor. You don't want your own favor. You want God's favor. You want to know that God is thinking about you, that he's he's going to bat for you. He's working for you. He's ahead of you in all. So I think David really explains it here. And again, I want you to go back and try to read this in in whole context. Read all of Psalm 27. Um, But here in this little passage, 13 and 14, David says, where would I be in life if I would, you know, if I didn't believe I would experience this favor that only God can give me? Now, let's go to the next verse, verse 14. And he, David writes this in a way where he repeats the first line with the last line. He says, rely on the Lord. He's encouraging all of us. Rely on the Lord. Don't rely on self. Don't rely on your husband. Don't rely on your boyfriend. Don't rely on your brother. Don't rely on your boss. Rely on the Lord. Don't rely on your pastor. Rely on the Lord. He says, be strong and confident in all that you do. Be strong and confident. We've been kind of having this theme the last few days, right? Putting on the full armor of God um, this past Sunday, which, by the way, was an enormous number of people tuned in to watch that. Uh, We're well over 200, I think we're approaching 250 um, viewers in just uh, under 40, just a little more than 48 hours. 250 viewers have tuned into that. Praise God for that. All glory to God on that. Because that message, when I wrote that message Sunday morning, it did not turn out exactly the way I thought it was going to go. 
the Holy Spirit had a mind uh, to go a different way, and I went with it. I just said, okay, Lord, you're, you want to go this way, we're going to go this way. And we're praising God because in that message on Sunday, you can watch that video on YouTube, you can watch it on Rumble, you can watch it on Facebook. In that video, we were told to prepare for battle. It's important for us to start preparing. Be confident. Be strong is what David is saying here in Psalm 27. And then he says, he repeats the first line with the last line. He says, rely on the Lord. Now, I would say that anytime somebody repeats something in life, you should probably take notice of it. Sometimes people repeat bad words, right? Sometimes people repeat fake news because they want to trick you. They want to manipulate you. But I think you at least take notice of it. And then you can decide on your own. Was this person being honest or was this person being dishonest? In the case of David, you know David is being totally honest. Because David, King David, the lineage of Jesus, King David here is writing with an inspiration of God. God told him what to write here. So it's as if God is writing to you right now saying, rely on the Lord, be strong and confident, rely on the Lord. In other words, don't fall back on your normal feelings or your normal way of dealing with things or even go into a a place of hiding. Don't do any of that. Rely on the Lord in everything. And in fact, be strong, be courageous. Don't back down. Be confident. Don't back down. And I think this is God's way of giving us kind of a theme for these last few days whether we're talking about, um, you know, like we were talking about sanctification. Actually, I think I mixed it up. Saturday was all about the armor of God, and I think Sunday was our sanctification. And sanctification is the one who drew about 245 viewers and listeners. And think about it. Sanctification, which is a subject of how we are to live our life all the way through, So the time that we take our last breath, even in that sanctification, God is the one who's empowering us. God is the one who's giving us the strength so that we can choose him every day when we wake up. And I think here, as we learn in these two verses, verse 13, where would I be if I didn't believe I would experience the favor of you, Lord? Where would I be? And then to hear him say, rely on the Lord, be strong, be confident, and rely on the Lord. And think about yourself. When have you been the most confident in your life? Was it something you you felt? Was it something that you uh, have done over and over again? Um, Was it because somebody else made you feel confident? Imagine the creator of the universe is telling you to be confident in Him. And why wouldn't you be? If you believe that God created everything, if I believe that God created this beautiful sunny day outside right now, and I do, I believe that God created this beautiful sunny day, and I believe that God is totally in charge of climate change, right? I don't believe that man has anything that they can do about climate change. I think man can do some things to make sure the streams aren't dirty and the rivers aren't dirty and that we don't throw garbage or basura in places that we shouldn't throw basura or garbage. But think about it. God is in control of the sun today. He's in control of the clouds. He's in control of all the weather weather patterns of the world. It doesn't happen by chance. So as I believe that, I'm confident that God is doing the right thing today. I'm confident that God is bringing this sunshine so homes can dry out and so that up north where we had flooding, they can they, the waters can subside and there can be drying that takes place up there in the northern part of the Philippines. I'm confident that plants will grow, that it will feed us. I'm cr- confident that animals will actually get stronger by grazing on very good food, like the grasses and the plants that they eat. 
And I'm also confident that people like you and me can go out in the sunshine and bring in that vitamin D that actually helps us with our immunity. All of these things, I'm confident in the Lord for this because I believe that He is the one who provides all this. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. I hope that is crystal clear for you because God takes Bible verses and passages like this and gives them to us so that we can relate to them individually. And I hope you were able to re relate to this individually today. May God bless you today. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we praise your holy name. We thank you for this Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. Thank you, Lord, that we have a God in heaven, a, a Father in heaven, that just takes care of all the things that we have no business trying to take care of. Lord, in fact, you take care of things in advance. You give us favor in advance before they even happen. We thank you and praise you for that. Thank you and praise you for the writings of King David. And Lord, we pray for anybody out there right now that needs a special blessing right now that you would provide for them. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Now, if while I was praying, you heard some kind of loud noise, that's because my dog is trying to get in the house, and that's how she gets in. She bangs the door so that she knows that I know that I'm supposed to open the door for her. That's uh, about 50% of my day is getting up, opening the door, and letting her in and out all day. Um, but I love my dog, and so I put up with that. Anyways, um, I want to invite you to come back tomorrow on Wednesday. We'll be back here tomorrow. Wednesday is a busy day for me, and I'm trying my best to produce a daily dose of hope on Wednesdays. If I ever don't come on on Wednesday, that's usually because it's just a super busy day. I have two Bible studies in the morning, one at 9 a.m., one at 10 to 12 a.m., so three hours worth of Bible study. And then in the evening, I'm taking a master's level um, biblical studies class uh, with Grace Church in Manila. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a really busy day. And to put my sermon together during that whole thing also creates uh, some kind of uh, difficulty sometimes. So at least you know what's going on with me. All right. I wish you all a great uh, evening. And uh, if you're watching this on the West Coast, very good morning to you when you watch this. Have a great, great day. And we will see you tomorrow on Wednesday. Here's a little bit of Skyly Shea, easy to forget. <laughs>